Hello, welcome to this virtual organic chemistry lab. I'm Derek France. In today's lab, we're going to take these cloves right here. They're just like any other cloves you could buy at a grocery store. Mmm, smells good. I love the smell of cloves, like pumpkin pie. We're going to take these cloves and subject them to steam distillation. What that's going to do is it's going to bring over any type of fairly low boiling um, organic compounds. Primarily, the, the main organic compound in, uh, in cloves that gives rise to its taste and its smell is called eugenol. Eugenol has a boiling point of about a, uh, 250 degrees Celsius. 250 degrees Celsius. Now that is 150 degrees uh, higher than the boiling point of water which is 100 degrees Celsius. So how is that going to work? By taking these cloves, placing them in water, and distilling the water, that steam distillation is going to bring over a much higher boiling substance, the eugenol, from these cloves. Let's talk a little bit about the theory for why this works. This will be our setup for the steam distillation. We're going to have a round bottom flask here, a Claisen adapter with a stopper, a three-way adapter with a thermometer attached with a thermometer adapter, a uh, condenser with cold water, and then a vacuum adapter that allows all that distillate to come down here and be collected in, a, in an Erlenmeyer flask. In the round bottom flask, we're going to fill that with water, but also with cloves. And those cloves are brown, and it's going to be a big powdery mess, a wet powder of cloves over here. Now the main component that gives rise to the odor and taste of cloves is a compound called eugenol. Which has a structure that looks like this. Now eugenol has a boiling point of about 250 degrees. And that is substantially higher than the boiling point of water, which is 100 degrees. So what we're going to have in this mix is a bunch of clove powder, which has a lot of other substances involved, but it does have this eugenol as an oil as a major component. We're going to have that suspended in the water. And as we start supplying heat down here, as we start supplying heat, the water is going to start distilling. It's going to enter the vapor phase it's going to slowly come up here, and then eventually condense in the condenser, and then pour down into this uh, Erlenmeyer flask where it's going to keep filling up. With the water, as it boils over, will bring with it, I'll draw it in black here, it will bring with it particles of eugenol. So eugenol will come along for the ride with the water, and it'll end up getting a mixture of water with some eugenol in uh, our distillate. And then we will do, uh, we will perform an extraction in order to, to uh, isolate the eugenol from that mixture. But why does this even work in the first place? Why does boiling water, which boils at 100 degrees Celsius, carry this eugenol along for the ride? To answer that, we have to look at how the vapor pressure of substances is affected by having two non-miscible liquids. If we have two non-miscible liquids, the vapor pressure total will equal the vapor pressure of water. If that is one of the non-miscible liquids, in this case it will be, plus the vapor pressure of eugenol, which is what we're using in our case. And all of this together will equal atmospheric pressure, which is 760 torr. As we start elevating the temperature to around water's boiling point of 100 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of water gets very close to um, 760 torr. It starts to approach 760 torr. So the contribution to that vapor pressure uh, of eugenol can be very low. It turns out at uh, 100 degrees Celsius, the vapor pressure of eugenol is 4 about four tour. 
and the sum of these two vapor pressures would be 764, which is a little bit higher than what you need in order to accomplish a distillation. So just below 100 degrees, you'll be in a position where your vapor pressure of water might be close to 757, and the vapor pressure of eugenol, the vapor pressure of eugenol will be about three. And at that point, you have the matching condition where you're able to get that total vapor pressure uh, equal to about 760 torr. When this occurs, both of those non-miscible liquids can distill together uh, across a distillation apparatus. This technique of steam distillation is not unique only to clove oil for the isolation of eugenol. Uh, many other essential oils and other types of natural oils can be obtained by this method. For example, lemon peel can be subjected to steam distillation in order to obtain the compound limonene, which gives lemons their uh, characteristic fragrance. Another interesting case is spearmint, which, when subjected to steam distillation, gives primarily R. carvone. Another interesting case is caraway seeds. When caraway seeds are subjected to steam distillation, they actually give the enantiomer of R. carvone. They give S. carvone, which looks like that. So through this technique of steam distillation, you can isolate compounds from uh, various natural sources, and all of these compounds have boiling points that are substantially higher than the boiling point of water. So the technique of steam distillation is a great way to isolate these compounds without needing to heat um, the, the natural materials up to these sort of temperatures where the boiling points are. If we had to heat uh, cloves up to 250 degrees in order to distill over the eugenol, that would probably cause a bit of decomposition of the eugenol as well as a lot of burning of the material. So it would not be nearly as clean. So steam distillation is a very effective way to isolate organic compounds from natural sources uh, in a very clean uh, strategy without needing to heat those um, natural sources to really high temperatures. These compounds, each of which have high boiling points far above the boiling point of water, can be isolated um, from uh, performing steam distillation on their natural sources. Here is all the glassware that will be required to perform our steam distillation. A 250 milliliter round bottom flask, a clamp, and then we're going to use this Claisen um, adapter right here with a stopper. That's just going to provide some more surface area, some more um, room for the steam distillation to occur. In case we have any uh, big bubbles sort of shooting out, they will be collected here and they won't come over the apparatus. Then we have a three-way adapter with a thermometer adapter and a thermometer. Uh, that way we can monitor the uh, temperature of the steam as it's coming over. Then we need our condenser. This is where we will condense our liquids, the water, as well as the uh, eugenol. And then we have a vacuum adapter. We're not going to need to use any vacuum, but this adapter will allow the condensed material to fall down into a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. Also note the locations where the Keck clamps will be required uh, in this apparatus. Okay, so let's go ahead and set this up. Okay, our steam distillation setup has been prepared. In the round bottom flask, we have 10 grams of cloves, 10 grams of cloves and 125 milliliters of water. Note that that is on top of a thermo well that's attached to a variac, currently turned off. I have not yet uh, put any heat into the, into the thermo well. And we have a lab jack underneath here so we can control the height of the thermo well. I'm going to just go ahead and already make that just barely touch the flask. So as soon as we turn the variac on, we will be able to get uh, the mixture heated up. Here is our setup. The condenser already has water flowing through it. And uh, on the other side over here, we have our collection flask, which is a 125 milliliter 
um, Erlenmeyer flask. And that is also on top of a jack so we can raise and lower as necessary. Above here, we have our thermometer. Note the location of the bottom tip of the thermometer. Uh, it's right there at the location where the distillate will come over and be condensed in our condenser. That will give us an accurate measurement of the, the temperature of that distillate as it crosses. At this point, we are ready to turn on the heat. I'm going to go to about here. <laughs> it's kind of a crapshoot where to begin. Actually, I'm going to go to full blast to begin. Let's go to full blast because sometimes we need uh, quite a bit of heat to get the water uh, boiling and uh, we have quite a lot of water in this flask. If it starts getting too rapid uh, boiling where we're getting all sorts of um, brown material getting up into this region of the distillation apparatus, we want to quickly cool down by lowering the, the, the lab jack. But we want to have vigorous boiling during this process. We want uh, uh, we don't want it to be too gentle. We want to we want to have vigorous boiling in order to to allow the steam distillation to be effective. Our mixture of cloves and water has been heated for about mm, seven minutes at this point, and you can see that there's the formation of some condensation here on the top of the flask but it's not yet boiling, so we need to just continue heating a little bit more. Now we are about 10 minutes into our steam distillation, and now you can see more and more condensation forming, and we can start seeing some foaming, so that's a good sign. We're seeing foaming down in the flask, reflux is starting to occur, and we can see condensation forming on the top of the flask, and now some cloudiness up here. So we want to keep an eye on this. We don't want all that foam to go up into this part of the apparatus. So maybe lower the jack a little bit. The foaminess is good, but we want to keep as much of that brown stuff down. We want to keep all of that brown stuff down in the flask if possible. So it's a balancing act now. If we look up at the thermometer, we are still at about 22 degrees, uh, which is the temperature of the air in the room. So the um, vapor has not yet reached the area where the thermometer is. Okay, now we are bubbling like crazy. <laughs> okay, it's getting a little out of hand, so lowering the jack yet again. Maintaining our balancing act here. Now you can see why we have this additional um, Claisen adapter between our flask and the three-way adapter. That's to collect, um, it's, it's, a, it's a place to allow some of the brown clove material to deposit because we do not want brown material over here in our distillate. Okay, things are getting a little hectic again. As you can see, it's a little tricky to balance this, but that's okay. Now we have condensation clearly forming here, vaporization reaching all the way, not quite yet to the thermometer. It's a little higher than it was before. So it looks like we're about ready to begin. Okay, I think I've reached a good height here where we're getting lots of foam, lots of bubbles. A little bit of that uh, material is reaching into the Claisen adapter, but that's okay. The vapor is uh, reaching all the way up to the three-way adapter, and now at this point, the thermometer is shooting up so that um, uh, the water that's in the vapor phase is now reaching this point at the boiling point of water of 100 degrees, so this uh, we expect it to go all the way to about 100 degrees. It's shooting up quite fast. Vapor is condensing here, but nothing yet is dripping. So uh, those drops down there were from earlier. They are not from, uh, from the um, distillation. And here we have some of our first um, condensation 
forming right at the condenser. So uh, our first drops of distillate should start um, dripping down into our Erlenmeyer flask momentarily. Okay, there we have it. Our first drop has just passed through the condenser. There's some uh, condensation on the outside of the condenser. That's just um, air from the water in the air from the room condensing, just like a cold glass of lemonade on a lemonade on a hot, humid summer day. But on the inside there, right there on that inside, that's a drop of our steam uh, distillate. Oh, there's another drop coming down. And is it going to fall? Yes. One more push. There it goes. That was our first drop of distillate. Now it's coming over a little more quickly. And the temperature at this point is just not focusing. There we go. It's uh, just below 100 degrees. And now we will continue to carefully monitor our steam distillation. Um, we should keep seeing boiling over in this side. We should see a lot of drops of condensation up here into the um, condenser. And then we're going to collect distillate until we've reached about 50 milliliters of distillate. All right, our steam distillation is continuing to proceed. We have uh, some liquid coming over here. So we have a decent amount of distillate at this point. We're going to go until about the 50 milliliter mark. Uh, I've had to lower the um, variac here to lower the, the heat uh, supplied to the system because it was going a little too crazy. I also, I also have the, the jack a little lower than uh, barely touching the, the round bottom flask. So still got to kind of keep an eye on this the whole time you're, you're doing the steam distillation because um, there's a balance between needing enough heat to, to, to perform the steam distillation but not providing so much heat that, that this goes ahead and boils over. So we definitely do not want any brown material here. That would be a, a failed steam distillation. And then we have to do it again, and that would be sad. Okay, it's been about 15 minutes since the last time we checked our steam distillation. Uh, we are continuing to boil over here and we are continuing to collect over here. Take a look, we're not quite at uh, 50 milliliters, but we're getting close. So uh, not too much longer until we are uh, done with this part of our steam distillation experiment. The thermometer is still showing a high temperature close to 100. So uh, just, just a matter of patience now. We just keep going until we collect about 50 milliliters of that distillate. We have now collected 50 milliliters of distillate, and you can see we still have some material over here boiling, but at this point I'm going to turn off the heat. So now the variac has been turned off and I've lowered our thermo well so that that will just cool down. We're not going to touch that material until it's nice and uh, cool at room temperature. Then we will clean up. Um, over here though, Let's take a look at our distillate. Our distillate is a cloudy mixture. So it's a nice cloudy mixture. Um, we're going to end up extracting out the eugenol from the water. But in order to make that eugenol fall out of solution even more, we are going to add 12.5 grams of sodium bromide. So I'm adding the sodium bromide solid sodium bromide to this mixture. We'll swirl that up. The sodium bromide will dissolve in the water. And now we will let that mixture sit for a little while. And uh, after that, we're ready to do our extraction. Our distillate after the addition of sodium bromide now has a slightly different appearance. It is still cloudy, but if you look at the top here, you'll see there's a layer of an oil. It almost looks like you have uh, pasta water and you've put some olive oil on top. There's this oily layer right on top. It might be a little bit difficult to see on the screen, um, but it's quite easy to see with the naked eye. 
what we're going to do now is extract that oil from that uh, water mixture using ethyl acetate and organic solvent. Okay, we are ready to uh, perform our extraction of the eugenol mixture right here. Uh, so this is an aqueous mixture with sodium bromide and also uh, all of the organic material that we obtained by steam distillation of cloves. We have our ethyl acetate. We will be using that for the extraction. Uh, we have a Erlenmeyer flask where we will put our ethyl acetate extracts. And there's a beaker where we will put our aqueous phase and we will also be using a separatory funnel to perform the extraction. Also over here is a funnel which we will be using throughout the procedure as well as a um, teared clean uh, round bottom flask. Okay, let's begin by pouring 15 milliliters of ethyl acetate into this uh, mixture right here. Okay, so 15 milliliters of ethyl acetate has been poured into this mixture right here. And uh, you can see that two phases are forming and we're gonna pour that into the separatory funnel. And I'm just gonna give this an additional rinse with a small amount of ethyl acetate just to make sure we get all of the organic soluble material into the separatory funnel. Okay, so before we begin shaking, there you can see that there's a nice top layer. Uh, that is our ethyl acetate layer. We can be sure this time without having to do a, a dropping water in to, be, to test where the water phase is uh, because we know we have a much smaller volume of ethyl acetate compared to the water. Now we put a stopper on top and we start our extraction. Remember to point the back, uh, I should say the um, bottom of the separatory funnel to the back of the fume hood when you vent, or you're doing the same procedure that we saw in the chemically active extraction lab. Okay. So we can see a nice separation of the two phases. We uh, will drain the aqueous phase out from the bottom. Okay, now remember our goal here is to extract the organic material from the steam distillation into the ethyl acetate. So the ethyl acetate layer here, the organic layer, has our uh, desired material. So we're gonna carefully pour that from the separatory funnel into this Erlenmeyer flask that we have pre-labeled as the ethyl acetate extract. Okay. So hopefully most of our eugenol and any other organic materials from the cloves is in here now. But just to be sure, we're gonna do one more extraction. Pour the aqueous phase back in. Make sure that stopcock is closed. Otherwise we'll have a big mess. Okay, the second extraction is now complete. I'm going to lower the water level again. You can see that there are two, two clear layers in there. Okay, now take these uh, 
ethylate, uh, the ethyl acetate extract here and combine it with the previous extract. All right. Now, this extract right here has a little bit of water in it from the aqueous phase from the the previous mixture that it was uh, combined with. So we're going to add a little bit of magnesium sulfate to dry that mixture. We want to see a nice snow globe effect with free flowing magnesium sulfate. And that's what we, oh, I was off the screen. There we go. And that's what we see here. So that is dry now. I'm going to use a new funnel because that one's still wet. We're going to get a new clean funnel in order to do a gravity filtration to remove that magnesium sulfate. Okay, here is a new clean uh, funnel with a fluted filter paper on top. So it's fluted, but you can see it doesn't really uh, stay down, but that's okay. That will stay down once we start pouring our mixture in. Remember, we do a um, gravity filtration when we wish to collect the liquid and we don't care about the solid. We don't care about that magnesium sulfate. We can just uh, discard of that afterwards. So carefully pour. There's some dry spots here I can push down. And it doesn't matter that we get all of that magnesium sulfate into the filter paper. That doesn't matter. But we want to give this another rinse with ethyl acetate just to try to get as much of the organic material out of here as possible and into that round bottom flask over there. Okay, I've poured a little more ethyl acetate into here. And then we can pour that over top to get as much of our desired organic material into that round bottom flask. Okay, now we have a nice um, colorless material, which is going to be the organic compounds that we obtained from steam distillation, primarily eugenol uh, from cloves and uh, ethyl acetate. Now we have to remove the ethyl acetate using the rotary evaporator. The rotary evaporator will remove the ethyl acetate solvent and leave behind our eugenol material. Okay, we have nearly reached the end of the rotary evaporator operation. You can see there's a little bit of liquid still in there. So we'll give this just a couple more minutes and then we will transfer it to a high vacuum. Most of the ethyl acetate has been removed using the rotary evaporator. And now we're going to take the rest of this off using high vacuum. There we go. I'll open it up. Maybe we'll see a couple bubbles. Maybe not. I guess not. No bubbles, but that's okay. So we will let this material sit on high vac uh, for about 15 minutes. And then we will be pretty confident that the ethyl acetate has been removed. All right. We'll take a look here. Look at that flask. That's been uh, uh, placed on high vac for a little while and all of the ethyl acetate has been removed. So this is all of the organic oils that we, are able, that we were able to obtain from cloves. We began with 10 grams of cloves. There's a lot more than 10 grams in here. We weighed out 10 grams of cloves and got 0 0.76 grams of this oil. So, um, what is that? 7.6%. 7.6% of the weight of the clove material that we put in the steam distillation apparatus uh, turned out to be the recovered uh, oil, which is predominantly eugenol. So steam distillation is a really effective technique for obtaining oils from natural materials. It's a, a common technique for obtaining essential oils. So those essential oils that you might see, might see at a store um, are often obtained by steam distillation. 
another cool thing we could have done today, instead of using cloves, is to use lemon peels. So lemon peels also gives a really cool uh, result. But anyway, there we have it. Let's see it one more time. That's our beautiful oil. Smells like cloves if I waft it. I'm a little bit nose blind from working with cloves all day, but I can definitely smell all of that clovey goodness coming from this uh, nice colorless oil that we were able to obtain. Okay, well that wraps up this video. I'm Derek France. This has been Virtual Organic Chemistry Lab, and I look forward to seeing you next time.